now to tonight's main event, A Night with Chili Royalty. Dun, da, da, dun. I practiced that actually. This event was Maybe born. Maybe a little more practice. A, uh, I'm just kidding. I'm no, kidding. You're right, kidding. You're right. kidding. Let's hear yours. Da, 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 da. Not as not as good. Mm. I give that one to me. I'm sorry. Okay. So tonight's event was born from a very poorly attended board meeting. It's true. <laughs> true story. We had been meeting due to COVID online via Zoom meetings. And then we decided enough time had gone by and everybody felt comfortable getting together again. However, several of the board members forgot and were waiting for us online. Half of us were at the farmhouse. Since we didn't have a quorum, we decided to talk about upcoming presentations for the year. And that's when this fella, Dan, brought up the possibility of discussing Cincinnati's favorite pastime, eating and discussing chili. So here we are. And before I introduce Dan, I want to thank Give Back Cincinnati. You may have seen their table out, out front. They help sponsor tonight's program. And their aim is community service with a social twist. And I love that. Their volunteers have provided over 15,000 hours of volunteer service, painted over 500 houses, and provide the region's largest Thanksgiving meal and many other contributions to this area and beyond. So thank you to them for sponsoring us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We would also like to thank Mount St. Joseph University for hosting us. We knew that we were gonna have a bigger crowd than what the Delhi Park Lodge can normally hold. So luckily, one of our wonderful board members, Scott Lloyd, works here and he is the director of library services and he said, let me see what I can do. And he did. So Scott, thank you very much. And everyone associated, Alan has worked primarily with the folks, but everyone associated here has been absolutely outstanding. And I want to give a shout out to Katrina Kenton, who has been our point person. Yes. And I think her boss's boss's boss is somewhere here in the audience. So way to go, Katrina. Finally, we welcome members of the founding Gold Star Empress and Skyline Chili families, those on stage tonight, and those members and friends of theirs in the audience. By just a round of applause, how many of you are family and friends of these guys here on stage? A very prolific group, very good. And now, it is my pleasure to turn it over to our MC for the evening, Dan Wallert, who serves on our board, and I am convinced literally knows every other person in Cincinnati. You've heard of Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. With this dude, I think it's like two degrees. Uh. True. Everybody at that thing a couple weeks ago knew him. It was scary. Dan earned his degree in chemical engineering, and by day works in marketing and in his off hours as a food historian, writing his own successful blogs on the origins of food. Dan has been featured in Cincinnati Magazine and will soon be featured in an episode on the History Channel. With several books to his credit, he has written a book entitled, are you ready for it? The Authentic History of Cincinnati Chili. Ladies and gentlemen, the idea man behind tonight's event, Dan Waller. Thank you, Anita. Well, thank you and welcome everybody. We're so excited to be celebrating such a unique event in our city, the 100th anniversary of Cincinnati Chili. How many cities can say that they have a food industry that has lasted an industry, not just a restaurant, that's lasted 100 years? So before I get started, let me introduce our special guests. First, from the Empress founding family, Johnny Karajif. I think he brought a lot of people with him tonight. I didn't bring anybody. They brought, they, they brought you. Of course. We've got Roger David from the founding family of Gold Star Chili. Welcome. And then finally, we've got Joe Lombronides of the founding family of Skyline Chili. So welcome, guys. 
I'm going to talk with each of them, but before we get started, I think it's interesting to point out that a Macedonian Greek Balkan dish became comfort food in a largely Germanic population that was used to sauerkraut and sausages and schnitzel and potato salads and things like that. So that's pretty unique. Now, tonight is not about revealing any secret recipes or secret spice blends unless you guys are willing to do that, but I don't think they're gonna do that tonight, so you guys put your notebooks on. away. Um, and it's also not about what chili is the best or who, you know, we're gonna duke it out to see who's, who's the best. Because, you know, we all have our favorites. We all have the ones that we grew up on, the ones that our parents and grandparents took us to, the ones that we met our friends after a high school football game, or maybe even took our first date to. So we all love Cincinnati chili, and without all of them, we wouldn't have the Cincinnati chili industry. So um, we love the taste. Each, uh, each parlor has a different taste. So if you're a Skyline person only or a Gold Star person only, I challenge you, I triple dog dare you to get out of your chili parlor box and try a different chili parlor to see what it tastes like. Um, I, I did a count this week and there are about plus or minus 26 chili parlors or 26, let's say 26 um, commercially available different types of chili. So what that amounts to is a one taste a day Christmas advent <laughs> calendar. <laughs> so <laughs> it's pretty amazing, right? So maybe that's your December goal, is each day in December, up, leading up into Christmas, take, go to a different Cincinnati chili parlor and taste their chili. So, before I get started, I wanna set the, everybody straight here. I wanna get the answer, uh, the final answer from each of these guys, and that is, is there chocolate in Cincinnati chili? John, you asking me? Yeah. Uh, personally, I don't, and personally, my father never did put it in there. Okay, good. So that's my answer. Okay, Roger? Absolutely not. Okay. Liar. Joe? No. <laughs> so did you hear that? No chocolate in Cincinnati chili. Now, we think that this was a myth created by a former Cincinnati Enquirer food writer from like 30 years ago in the early 80s, that thought that um, there was a taste that she thought she had broken the code and it was chocolate. But you all heard it here first, or maybe for the hundredth time, that there's no chocolate in Cincinnati chili. And we know that Cincinnati chili has reached sort of this pop icon status when it's in a Simpsons episode. Did anyone see this episode? It was about a year ago, it was during the pandemic, and Principal Skinner and his boss came to Cincinnati for some sort of principal's conference. And they ate at the Ludlow Avenue skyline. But you can see they got it all wrong because look at those bowls. Those aren't the, right, those aren't the plates that we eat them out of. And where's the cheese? Where's the huge mound of cheese? And then they did something that's like sacrilege. They swirled it like a bowl of eggs and they, they ate it like spaghetti. So they got it all wrong. The, actually, the outside, they did really good. They, they did a great likeness of the, um, the Ludlow uh, Avenue Chili Parlor, but other than that, they got it all wrong. But hey, you know, at least we're in a Simpsons episode, so we're immortalized in cultural <laughs> history. So let me take you back in time to the 1920s. Between the World Wars, um, during Prohibition, before the Great Depression, before fast food, before McDonald's, uh, 1921, we did have White Castle. So White Castle was around back then. But this is a time of flappers and bootleggers. So this is the time, October, a good month for uh, starting a chili parlor because Skyline also celebrates their birthday in October, as well as other cool Librans like myself. So <laughs> October is a good month, I think. So Johnny, <laughs> yeah, let's sure. talk about your family. So these, this is a picture from 1921 here in Cincinnati at Molly Studio on Vine Street. So can you tell us who each of these three dapper looking gentlemen are? 
uh, these are three brothers. Yeah. That is, that is Tom Karajif over there. This is uh, Aguirre who came with them. And this is my bed, Pop. John, Johnny, John, John Kar Karajev. That Excellent. is my dad. And uh, I'm here to support him. Excellent. So I'm happy to say, I'm happy to tell you, I don't know if you guys know this, the Karajev family, the US Senate uh, Proclamation 714 which uh, recognized 2022 Macedonian American Heritage Month, recognizes your dad and his brothers for their contribution to America's culture. That's awesome. Well, that Isn't that cool? Awesome. You're doggone right. Why not? Yeah, why not? But that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I did a little research, and what's interesting about their names, Tom or Athenus Ath um, yeah. in Macedonian, yeah. his, his name means immortal. So they, they kind of founded this immortal industry. Um, our Giro means of value, and he was kind of the oldest brother that came and helped, helped them get on their feet. Right. And then uh, Ivan means um, of God, I believe. So, you know, kind of bringing, you know, this, this industry into our, you know, to nourish us. So I think that's kind of a cool poetic story. The names kind of fit into the chili story. Uh, this, is, um, this is actually an ad from a Cincinnati Macedonian magazine. This is Argyro, the third brother. Yep. So whatever happened to him? Well, he, he had a grocery store to, to, and worked there. And uh, over the years, he went to work for my dad at the Empress. And he and his wife lived in our house. My dad fixed a room upstairs uh, and put a kitchen in for him with the stove, the refrigerator, and everything, plus a bathroom. And they lived upstairs in our, in our house. Now, he did work for my dad for several years, but unfortunately, his wife wasn't really too fond of living in America and wanted to go back to the village where she came from. So they, they both went back to, uh, well, I assume they went back to Macedonia, but you know, those countries, Macedonia, Bulgaria, and whatever, and Greece, and, all, and Turkey, and all them, I don't know whether any of them ever liked each other, <laughs> but they're all separate, but they're all the same. Yeah. They just have different thoughts, right. and that's, Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Right. But uh, she wanted to go back, so uh, he went, they went back. Okay. And then so he's out of the picture. He's out of the picture. It was just Tom and John left. And what was, what was the name of the, where were they from in Macedonia? Or which? Uh, uh, well, the, the city they came from was Krupishta. And I, if I, I might be wrong, but I think it's called Argus Arustakan now. But that, that's the city they came from. Okay. So this, this area kind of in the upper por uh, west portion of what is now Greece. Yeah, boy, I'll tell you, Eastern Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Still. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but that was one thing my dad, after the war, he did not want to stay there. He, want, he said, I'm going to America. And that's what brought many of the Greek that and Macedonian. Brought, that, he, that brought a lot of them, yes. And this is a picture of him when he was in the war. In the over. war, that's him. He's a second third. Second from the right, I think. And second I, from the right, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's him. Dapper that's looking guy. I yep. called him Pop. Pop. Is that okay? Okay. And so on October 24th in 1922, he opens a small little chili parlor in the Empress Burlesque Theater. Really? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about that. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the only thing I can figure out is that uh, 
there were an awful lot of men that would go to the Empress Theater practically every <laughs> doggone night, because it probably only cost about 50 cents to get in there. Uh, and I would assume after their last show, about 95% of them went out to get something to eat, and there was only like one or two restaurants open, and my father's was one of them. And I'm sure that place was flooded every night with men eating like they've never eaten before. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's, and the rest is history. Right. The rest is history. The rest is, well, what's interesting, so we, it, as a historical society, we like to do what's called photo archaeology. And if you look at this, burlesque is spelled wrong. It's B-U-R-L-E-S-K. And so they, they did, I don't know if that was because of cost of letters or signage or whatever, but they did, they did correct it a few years later. But this, these are some of the ads of some of the acts that performed at the Empress Burlesque. Uh, you could see, for example, Elsie do her dances. I don't know what that means. <laughs> you had Jean Dufresne and the Monte Carlo girls, or Jean Carter. And if you look through the old newspapers, I mean, they're just phenomenal uh, ads face. for all these Spaghetti. different types of shows. So God. that's, that's uh, I mean, that's a lot of foot traffic. So that's, that's good for business, right? Especially when it only costs 35 cents to get into the dog. That's store. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and five cent for a coney, right? Well, they were, they, they were 10 cents, but you could get three for a quarter. Okay. Good deal, huh? So we see a couple of years later, they've, they've, re, they've corrected the spelling, they spelled it correctly. And Empress Chile was right there on the side under that striped awning. Now, this, this kind of incenses me. A lot of these like helicopter journals from out of town say they started a hot dog stand next to a theater, making it sound like it's a, a dirty water dog stand from New York City or you know, one of the, uh, the dog stands in New Orleans. It was actually a parlor. It was a brick and mortar type of um, facility. And this is the money, what I call the money shot of Cincinnati chili. This is the that's, inside of that first chili park. That, that's my father. So this is John. That's, Did he ever? Actually, technically his first name is Constantine. His middle name is John. Okay. And well, I won't go into the other part, but he changed. He didn't change his name. He just didn't use. Con he didn't use Constantine. That's after some religious thing that, because January twentieth is like his name day. So he's named after some kind of a saint. A saint that was on the. Okay. So he, that's why he went by John, gotcha. and that's why all three of the brothers' middle name is John. Okay. Well, so some more photo archaeology on this. Um, you can see there's kind of dry goods in the background. If you look in the corner there, there's a really cool stacking of local cigar brands like Eyebold and uh, Turtle Joe and some others that we yeah. saw. But Eyebold the was the big seller. Right. Yeah. That was a, the biggest local cigar company. And, you know, we think about Cincinnati chili and people have said, oh, that's not chili. It's not spicy enough. But if you look on that counter right next to Smiling John, whoops, that's a bottle of hot sauce. <laughs> and it's Frank's hot sauce because in 1921, Frank's, Frank's Tea and Spice, spice company, company, which was here in Cincinnati. And that's who my dad bought all his spices from. So that's a bottle of Frank's Red Hot Sauce on the original counter. And this was 1923, I think, right? Is that uh, yeah, I, I would think it would be a year after, or less than a year after, but it was 23. After they started. So this was, you know, it was a parlor. A parlor, they, <clears throat> they called it a parlor. Why? Because it was a small, not, it wasn't a full-service restaurant or... No, he just... Uh... <sighs> He opened early. I mean, he wasn't open for breakfast. I don't, I'm almost sure he was not open for breakfast, but lunch and dinner, and quite obviously for after the midnight show at the Burlesque House. <laughs> well, I would quite assume that's yeah. where quite a bit of the money came in from. Yeah. So originally, there was no cheese on the, the chili. On the, well, on the Coney, there was no cheese originally. Uh, if you had a three-way, you had cheese. See, I don't, and, 
but that I might have, that came later though, not in, not initially. No, no. Yeah. You know, and I uh, and I think these two gentlemen here who have the two biggest chains in town and uh, and they th I think they know what the heck they're doing. Uh, I don't care what people outside of the city, whether they think Chile is any good or not. That's none of their damn business. <laughs> I know, <laughs> yeah, I know oh, that people in our town awesome. like all this Chile. <laughs> and that's all that's important to me. That's right. <laughs> Excellent. So this is this was a close up that um, we we snipped out of that original uh, money shot, and it shows you know back then of course it wasn't called Cincinnati style chili, no. but they were smart to call it chili. They yeah. they could have called it Greek meat sauce, right, or Macedonian meat sauce. No, I don't think but that they would have worked. <laughs> <laughs> that probably wouldn't have helped. Uh, spaghetti chili was fifteen cents, and Coney soft drinks and uh, coffee were all five cents. But you have a story of when it was when the cheese coney was ten cents and what happened. Well, okay, the the coney originally or after the five cent, it it went to ten cents, and my dad sold the conies three for a quarter. And then one of his purveyors wanted him to put cheese on the conies. So the coney, the, the coney, the cheese coney went to 12 cents, but all his purveyors tried to convince him they won't pay the two, the customers won't pay the two cents. <laughs> he said, don't, uh, don't do it. Well, do I have to say the rest is history? <laughs> My dad was as stubborn as I was. He says, we're going to go until they don't buy it anymore, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> So this is what is, this I think is your dad's wedding picture. Is That's that right? my mom's wedding uh, picture. That's right. There's my dad. I don't know who the little child is in there. That's Tom over there, and I don't know who the man and woman are there. I wasn't around, and so I don't know. <laughs> Yet, obviously, they had to be some sort of a relative or very close friend. Well. You told me at one time that she's wearing a typical Bulgarian headdress mm -hmm. um, that I think is called a uh, sokai. And what's cool about that is that that was prohibited during the Ottoman Turk Empire. So she's wearing that true. as a pride, you know, Bulgarian pride, girl power. You know, this is, I'm allowed to wear this. And um, I think that's pretty cool from a a woman's history standpoint. Especially like so. almost 90 years ago. Yeah. yeah, right. Right after the Balkan Wars. Right. So isn't that a beautiful picture? And wait. Where did you get that picture? <laughs> <laughs> who's that little guy with the, the I suspenders? I had no hiked idea. Up? No, that's, that's me. That's my middle brother. That's my middle brother, Eddie. And that's my oldest brother, Connie. Unfortunately, they are both gone, along with my mom and dad. We, uh, when we went to the opera, we went to the summer opera at the zoo. I would imagine that a lot of people here did not know that the opera, the Cincinnati Summer Opera, started at the Cincinnati Zoo. And an, uh, they had a roof over the amphitheater, but no sides. So when it rained and the wind blew, the rain came in and everybody got wet on the side. But uh, when we went to the opera, my dad had to buy tickets for every doggone opera. If they played it three times, we went three times. He bought, <laughs> and he had the same seats for, I don't know how many years. Second row center started with three seats. And then when I got old enough, he bought four seats. But that's where we were going, to the opera. And so that so is... we had to get dressed up. We can't wear Levi's and T-shirts. Oh, yeah. So that's on Whitfield Avenue? Whitfield Avenue. And that... 418 Whitfield. That house is still standing today. Yes, it is. We drove by there yesterday with my, uh, a couple of my relatives, and it's still there. And so that is the only original Empress building still standing, because what happened there? What did your dad do in that house every day? <laughs> for the restaurant. 
Well, actually, we had all the spices from Frank T. and Spice delivered to the house. And they came in big 50 pound, I think it was 50 pound boxes, wasn't it? I, well, I was still only about <laughs> six or seven years old. But anyway, they came in boxes. And he, we had a, a little platform before you go to the basement and he stored them there. And then every night when he came home from work, he would mix 12, 24 bags of, of spices, put them in a shopping bag, and he would take him to work the next day. And then when he could come home that night, he would do the same doggone thing, pull all the spices out, make as many bags as he needed, and he put all the spices in a bag. And at, at, at certain times, we, he had workers that wanted to work there because they thought he mixed the spices in his basement at the restaurant. And when they found out that he mixed them at home, they left and opened up something else. So I don't know, but that's the story I got from my mom and dad. That's a cool And story. I don't think they would lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> so business takes off, right? People yes, start did. liking it and uh, your dad uh, and his brother decide to move to Fifth Street. Yeah, Fifth Street. Across Ooh. from? The Greyhound bus station. So lots of foot traffic. And weren't there several theaters on Fifth Street at that time? The Albi? Well, the Albi, I think, was there. Uh, I think the RKO Palace was there. They, they were a block up or two blocks up. I don't know if the Keese Theater was there yet. It, it, it might have been. But, I mean, you know, you didn't have airplane service, and trains and buses were the only way people could get from point A to point B. Yeah. So lots, so they, of, lots of foot traffic. A lot of foot traffic, and that's why he stayed open until 2 in the morning. And so the, you worked here as a, as as a, a boy, child. right? What, uh, what did you do? What was your job? <laughs> I, at the age of 7 and 8, and maybe 9, I, during, during the school year, I would go down on Saturdays and I would help the, I would help the dishwasher in the kitchen, take out the dishes and I would just help sweep around. If they needed napkins from the basement, I would go down and get them for the, the server, for the waiters. He didn't, he had, we, they were called waiters, so not servers was out, I guess. And uh, so I would go down and get some napkins and, you know, if they needed straws or whatever, and I would just, you know, help what I could in the kitchen. Uh, not allowed to go out to the steam table. Not old enough, not big enough. And couldn't hold the four ounce ladles. So I, that was off limits. But I worked in the kitchen. I, I, I learned how to wash dishes in a dishwasher, so. Excellent. So. That was just part of it. I think that's another, is that you again uh, in the Cincinnati Inquirer? Uh, that's Eddie. That's, that's Eddie, Eddie when he was a little kid. They're listening to opera from the radio. <clears throat> On Saturdays, the Metropolitan has operas during the winter season at one o'clock every, every Saturday live from the Met. And he, my dad was, I guess the largest opera lover I have ever known in my life. But he, on Saturdays, he would come home a little early so he could at least hear the, the, the third and fourth act of the opera. But we had a big radio and Eddie, and Eddie listened to the opera and I listened to the opera and my oldest brother Connie would listen to the opera, although Connie was more into symphonic music because he became a... Uh, I'll say it, Karen, a damn good violinist that played for the Cincinnati Symphony for 48 years. Wow. Very cool. So I wanted to bring this picture up because I think this is another Cincinnati chili money shot. So can you tell us about this picture, where it is and who's in it? This picture was taken in our dining room. We had dinners periodically during the year, especially on, uh, on, on my father's birthday and whatnot. The first lady is my mother. Next to her is dad. 
across the aisle. Where is that Lombardidis kid? Um, so this is Nick, isn't it? Is this Nick Lombardidis? That's, that's, uh, that's the father. Next to him is Ernest Pack. He was my brother's first violin, good violin teacher. He lived about a block away and was always invited to our dinners. We, everybody, my mom and dad and my brothers, they, they just love that guy and he played in the symphony anyway. And this is... And over there is, uh, is either Chris Bill, because I, I, they were twins and I couldn't tell them apart. <laughs> they looked a lot alike. Yeah. So, as you can see, there was not competition. In fact, there was collaboration. Exactly. And you, you said, if I heard you right, that um, you were there as a kid at the, the day before Skyline and Price Hill opened. Is Absolutely. That right? So uh, what were you Mr. doing Lombardis, at this Mr. Lombardidis invited my... They always were talking about they wanted to open up a restaurant. My dad told them, go, go open up a restaurant. You've got five boys. I think that you had five boys, didn't yep. you, down there? Yep. Yeah, five boys. I said, you got, you got your workhorse right there. Uh, so they <laughs> <laughs> makes sense, yeah. So they uh, they they found a place in Price Hill, and when the uh, when the thing was ready to open, they asked my dad if he would come up on the Sunday before, so they could walk so he could walk through the restaurant. They wanted to show him what they had and and whatnot. Now I was only seven years old because this is forty nine and I was born in forty two. But I remember going up there with my mom and dad, and uh, all the well, all the Lombardistas were there. My God, and they they took my dad through there. They showed him the kettles and, and all the stuff. And my dad said, "This is beautiful, just just beautiful. Uh, you've got a t great location right there on uh, what's it? What, what is Glenway. that? Glenway? Glenway, yeah. Glenway Avenue." which is still busy and was busy back then. And I said, you've got a beautiful location. And uh, he, he liked the name of it, Skyline. And uh, uh, he showed us all through the restaurant and everything. And then we went home and the rest is history it's for history. Skyline. <laughs> but I will tell you, and you may know this, Skyline didn't start off at the time. They opened up a couple of places that did not, were not busy at all. And one of them was downtown. And the other one was in North College Hill. It was a carryout. And two of the Lombardinas would come down uh, and, and talk to my brother and say, God, you know, we're not doing anything. He said, you just got to stick it out. And you know what? The rest is history, like I've said before. Yeah, know that. Now you know what they've got, a multi-million dollar <laughs> operation. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so that brings us to Skyline. Whew, good. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if I can follow You're that up. Great job. So now we're now we're post-war. We're 40s, so we're we're no longer flappers and um, bootleggers. We're like Andrew's sisters and that that sort of thing. So, Joe, I have, to, I have to share with you something that my cousin Julie posted today. Okay. Um, it's, uh, I guess it was Grandparents' Day, and she was talking about this letter that her eight-year-old grandson sent her because um, they were invited to Grandparents' Day, and, and his name is Jeffrey. He says, my grandparents fill my life with lots of fun at football parties when we get to have the Skyline Chili Dip <laughs> Grammy Julie, I love your Skyline chili dip better than Skyline's Skyline chili dip. <laughs> That's great. So it just goes to show you food tastes better when it's made with love, especially For sure. from That's grandma's great. love. <laughs> so, okay. So this is a picture um, of Nicholas's parents yes. from Greece. Um, we'll call them... Grandma and Grandpa yeah, well, I'm, not sure. I, I'm not sure about their names. <laughs> and then, no. who is this? Nicholas and Alexandria. Okay. Yep. And so, uh, Nicholas was the immigrant, and he came with Alexandria, Alexandria, or did she come later? I think they came together, but I'm not positive. 
And so um, tell us a little bit, how did Skyline the name come about? Do you so my understanding and my family's understanding was when he came to the city, he saw the outline of the, the downtown lighting up the sky and came up with it. And uh, downtown Skyline, or the downtown Skyline was visible from the original restaurant. That was on Glumley Avenue. Yep. And it, uh, as we hear, approved by the original uh, Kiraj family. I, 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 I'm pretty sure that's how it was, man. Yeah. I, they, you could see the all, you could see downtown from, and from you were that, like up on the hill. Yep. Yeah. And so you you run which so, uh, the one on Delhi, a mile down the road from here. Yeah, okay. Yep. And how how long have you had had so that? So my dad before? and my uncle opened Delhi Skyline in 1980. It was before that. It was a Daily Donuts. Oh yeah. Um, they uh, opened that, and then around the mid-90s, uh, they got approval to open the one on Glenway. My uncle took Glenway, and my dad kept Delhi. But our Delhi location was the first Skyline, I think it was three years after they opened it, was the first drive through um, They actually made the old dock steps where they got deliveries. They covered it up and made it a drive through so you'd have to like walk down like three or four steps to take orders to make the drive through Oh, yeah, great. <laughs> we recently got rid of that, and it's way better. Yeah, you, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> so you recently did almost a, a full, yeah, full renovation, remodel. right? Yeah. How, uh, a year ago, or how long have you? Uh, we opened back, we started last February, February 15th. We were drive-through only for nine weeks, and then we were planning on opening right after that, but um, a couple days after it was completely done, my staff kept cleaning, and like the next day we'd come, and there was still construction dust, so we closed completely for like a week and a half, and then opened back up April 26th of last year. All right. Yep. And shameless plug for Delhi Historical Society, we helped them with historical photos. You guys did an amazing job, it was awesome. So They've in, got our, a... in our round room area, like our rotunda, we have a uh, big black and white mural of like 34 pictures of like old Delhi, just historical landmarks, and then on each of those tables up there, we have like a little cheat sheet that people can play. They're all numbered, so you can guess which uh, pictures are which. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So go Turned to the Delhi on. and play the trivia, yeah. the yeah. historical trivia game. So, you know, we're talking about what this area that they all came from. I found this. This is uh, Nicholas's declaration of intention for citizenship. And what's interesting, he says he's from Macedonia. Yeah, it's wild. And but his race is Greek, so you know it's it was such a crisscross. It was the Ottoman Empire was imploding, you know. It's just very interesting. Um, it, it's no surprise that they came here for a better life because yeah. it was so confusing. Who's who? Who are you? Yeah. Kind of thing. So this is a cool picture, I think, yeah. of That's all five funny. of the brothers. Yep. So do you, are you able to name them? So I'm, I believe Lambert, who is my grandfather, who's the oldest, is on the very right. Um, I believe Jim is next to him. He was the second oldest. The two twins, uh, Bill and Christy, and then John is all, all the way on the left. That's right. That's the way right. it's right. No. Yeah. And so this is a fun picture we found in the Cincinnati Enquirer. This is one of the twins. Yeah in 1937 singing at the um, cathedral in downtown Cincinnati on Christmas Eve mass. And at, at the time, I think they were living on Plum Street. Probably, I don't know where they lived before Beach. And um, so this was 1937, uh, the Chili Parlor was founded in 49, yep. so about 10-ish years before the formation. And so this is the entire Lombardini's family, the brothers, their wives, uh, Nicholas and Alexandra and some of the kids yep. at the time. So what was it like growing up as a Lombardini's? Was everybody asking you in school for uh, yeah, chili coupons? Yeah, my friends would kind of play games with me. I wasn't like the biggest fan of people telling people that like I was like a Skyline, like associated with Skyline. So all my friends would embarrass me when we're out in front of everybody like, you know who this guy is? And it's like... I mean, that part was fine, but it made me super uncomfortable, kind of like this does right now. <laughs> um, You're doing fine. <laughs> but, I mean, I've always been proud of, like, what my great-grandfather and grandfather did, and I'm fortunate enough to 
carry on and have a livelihood of what they started. And it's just amazing what everybody up here did and the Cincinnati Chili. It's just, I feel very fortunate that I'm a part of the family that started that. Yeah. Yeah. And we thank you, your family, for its contributions. So this is the Skyline Chili money shot yeah. inside the original Price Hill Chili, or Price Hill Chili location of Skyline. And what's interesting, so when it was demolished and it was moved, um, they sort of, I think they didn't, wasn't there an auction for things? Yeah. Or they, they so. sold off some of the things. Yeah. Well, the, the museum center has the original front door, yeah. I think that's, or the kitchen door. Yep. One of the prominent doors. And then the Price Hill Historical Society has an original booth set up so you can sort of walk wow. into the original Skyline Chili Parlor at the Price Hill. So here's another picture. This is Lambert and Christy Lombronides inside the original. Um, and it says they, their father, Nicholas, once worked as a cook at the original Empress Chili. Right. And then there's another view. And so that's, that's the story of Skyline. So now we move into the Motown era, the disco era, uh, the era of folk music and summers of love and things like that. So 1963. So we're talking Gold Star. So Roger, who are these dapper looking dudes? All right, so uh, these are three of my uncles and my father. So uh, my uncle Frank on the left, my uncle Dave, uh, my father Bishara, who was Charlie, and then my uncle Bashir on the end, um, were the four, I guess, founders of, of Gold Star. The two in the middle, started it while um, the other two were going to school or one was a CPA and the other one was um, worked for a bank. And then as things got moving along, they all four kind of then joined forces. So what is Hamburger Heaven and what does yeah. that have to do with Gold Search? So uh, Hamburger Heaven, first of all, let me say that my um, father and his brother Dave, the two in the center, opened up multiple different restaurants with multiple different family members. And uh, some were bars, some were restaurants, and they just, they just didn't work, they failed. And oftentimes they were in more urban settings. And so here was this restaurant out in Mount Washington, which was a little bit more suburban. And they're like, look, let's try our luck here. Maybe we won't have to have that late night fighting crowd and that drinking crowd. And let's just try to have a little family restaurant. So Hamburger Heaven was purchased in Mount Washington and, uh, and with it came this recipe that was born out of Dixie, which was born out of Empress. So that's what they ended up with. At that time though, they were a full service restaurant and um, hamburgers were the, were the majority of their sales. Uh, and you know, down the road here it became, they decided to just do chili and not have breakfast and not have burgers. And, and so uh, it kind of evolved. That is a, uh, I think that's uh, made off, that's sitting behind the counter there. Yeah, this is the Gold Star Manoff. money yep. shot, or yep. one of the yeah. Gold Star yeah. money shots. That's uh, Tom Manoff, who started Hamburger Heaven, whose father, Petro Manoff, uh, worked for Nicholas Sarakatsanis of Dixie Chili, and then he started his own chili parlor called The Strand which is now the location of gourmet chili parlor. So all this <laughs> web of crisscrossing yeah. chili parlors, which is that gourmet chili location is second only to the Dixie location on Mama Street as the oldest continually operating chili parlor oh, wow. location yeah. in yeah. greater Cincinnati. And I think we have a man off descended out in the audience. Is Karen here? If you are squeak or raise your oh, hand. There she is. Oh, okay. There she is. <laughs> Don't leave. I gotta find you. Do not leave. I have to find you later, so don't leave. <laughs> so let's talk about how the name Gold Star came yeah. about. So uh, a little bit of a little bit of history there. My family, my father, and uh, you saw three of his brothers, but there were ten of them. Two sisters, eight boys, and um, you know, on my mother's side, there were ten also. Three boys and seven. 
<laughs> sisters. So I'm a huge family, and that's just me. So uh, they were dirt poor. Uh, they often uh, would work in tobacco fields in the country of Jordan. And so when they ended up in the United States and they needed to change the name of Hamburger Heaven to another, another brand, they needed to come up with another brand name, my dad's uncle said, we'll call it Gold Star. And we're like, well, okay, Gold Star, I guess that's what we'll call it because there's a cigarette, a premium cigarette in Jordan that was called Gold Star. And so that's where the name came from. It had nothing to do with these guys. It just came, that's that's awesome. where it came from. <laughs> And so this is the original, I think, the original Chile, uh, Gold Star logo, is yeah, that right? Yeah, that's correct. And is that the original? So that looks like the first franchise in um, Mount Healthy is oh, okay. what that might look like. I might have them confused, though. I think you have the Mount Healthy location yeah, yeah. as well. So Mount Healthy was the first franchise the location. first franchise location. And that's yeah. still, there's still a Gold Star in Mount Healthy, right? Yeah, actually, the original owner, Issa Nasser, is still there, and he was the one that named it Gold Star. Oh, uh, okay. So, interesting. This is another early. That was another version. I have no idea where that logo came from, but <laughs> let's just say controls were a little loose back then. That is in Mount Washington. <laughs> that is in Mount Washington. By the way, I'm the CEO of the company today, so I can. Uh, Way to go! <laughs> I can change some of these things. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> but that was our our location in Mount Washington. Um, and behind it, there is our first commissary that we ever had. Uh, and I remember being a little kid in the evenings. So I, I share a little bit of this with you. In the evenings, we would, um, we would sell the chili concentrated in five gallon tubs, fresh, never frozen. And they would, franchisees would sometimes come to the commissary and we just put it in the back of their trunk. <laughs> John, being honest, <laughs> and then they would just drive it off to the restaurant. Uh -huh. You know, it's cold when they put it in there, and obviously you couldn't do that today, right? So we 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 would we would they would take the chili, and then late in the evenings they would bring back the empties, but they weren't totally clean. So my dad would be working in the evenings in the commissary, and I remember being a little kid just handing him five gallon, dirty five gallon buckets for him to wash, you know, the entire time. So uh, <laughs> that, was, that was the way that ran. And so over the years, you've had some pretty interesting um, spokespeople. Um, I remember the Pete Rose days. I still have yeah. my Pete Rose glass. From <laughs> yeah, yeah. <a> good... <laughs> look close, I think you put the glove on the wrong hand. What's that? Look, look, look at the glove, I think it's on the wrong hand. Oh, really? <laughs> Look at it next time you get a chance. <laughs> so this is another money shot of an inside of a, a Gold Star Chili parlor. We were going to change the name of the uh, three-way to the trifecta. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds more Lexington, that, not yeah, Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is an interesting photo from 1977 at the Florence mm -hmm. Gold Star, a three-way for 10. <laughs> and so... Um, I think you guys have come up with a lot of good sort of limited time offerings like at Oktoberfest. Yeah. You know, like what, I'm, what I'm realizing from being up here uh, with these distinguished guests is that, you know, the time period really influenced the marketing approach. It influenced the strategy. It influenced the business model. It influenced also, you know, the connections. You know, when you have first generation connections and you're trying to work towards something, those, you were sometimes making decisions for the family first and the business second. You know, and I think my generation coming into the business now is really trying to be a business family rather than a family business. And it just puts things through a different lens. And sometimes I have to tell my Aunt Faye she can't do that. But, it, but, <laughs> but the key is, do I get invited to Thanksgiving dinner? And that's, that's always the balance. I know I'm in good shape if I get invited. So. And this is a recent family picture. Who are all these? Yeah, so we have a couple. So the two guys on the ends is uh, Sammy and Samer. They are brothers. Uh, that's their father, Uncle Frank. Uh, I am behind him. And then uh, to the left of that is Bashir, John, BJ, and Bassim. So um, Bassim's a uh, second generation from my Uncle Dave. 
and uh, Bashir John is the nephew of one of the founders, my uncle Bashir. So that was a, uh, a picture at one of our openings. And so how many family members are still in the business today? So of the four founding uh, brothers, only one is uh, remaining with us. And, um, you know, a lot of this has gone to second generation. So I have about 16 shareholders to deal with. Uh, <laughs> but we have, the right, we have the right infrastructure in place to, to you know, uh, not make me not make me too crazy, but we have 16 today. 16, yeah. okay. And this is another, another photo shot. Yeah. yeah. And so this hey, is that kind guy's of... here. Yeah. This guy is here today. Oh, that's Chili John. Where are you? There he is. Oh, okay, that's him. You know, by the way, I have that in my office if you want. Awesome. <laughs> so this is a, kind of a cool story. The Bellevue, um, uh, Bellevue, Kentucky. Gold Star commissioned C.F. Payne, who's a famous uh, nas inter national, international artist from Cincinnati, lives in Wyoming. He did uh, illustration for Rolling Stone, Reader's Digest, Time Magazine. And so Gold Star commissioned him for the Bellevue store to build yeah. this, or do this big mural inside the, the store. And so I did not know that was Chili. That is it, Chili Rick. And Chili Rick, and he's here in the audience. So. Um, <laughs> That's pretty cool. So that uh, so some of the snippets of this, I think, are in some uh, Gold Stars, uh, other Gold Stars other than Bellevue. Is that right? Or yeah, um, when I came on as CEO in 2014, um, we put together a remodeling package, and I think a lot of that's gone now, unfortunately, or fortunately. Oh well. Well, there's still <laughs> digital copies. There's though. still digital copies. Yeah. That's right. And so. Being the uh, chili of the Cincinnati yeah, Bengals, yeah. recently, tell us about the White House. Uh, this was a this was a tricky, this was a tricky promotion for us, right? So the Bengals had their white out, right, where they had the white helmets. So we decided to make all our food with white mild cheddar cheese, which tastes the exact same as yellow cheddar cheese, and but a lot of people were a little confused by the fact that they were getting white cheese. <laughs> But it's the same as yellow cheese. And how do you explain that to them without telling them that yellow cheese, there's a, there's a way they make yellow cheese. <laughs> so, uh, but it was fun. And we had a good time doing it. So that was a recent promotion. And we'll do it again. We'll do it again. <laughs> so uh, talk about uh, some of the community organizations that Gold Stars. You know, we were very much involved. And I think that history goes back to um, my grandfather in Jordan, uh, you know, Jordan is primarily a Muslim country. And my grandfather and my family are Christian. I think everybody that's Christian was probably related to me in Jordan <laughs> one way or another. But there's a small village uh, and the village is Puhais, which is a Christian village. And my grandfather was a parliament member, dirt poor, but he was a parliament member and would represent many of the Christians in that community. Um, and so oftentimes a parliament member, you would, you would come to them for help. You would come to them if you got in an argument with your wife. You would come to him to help your kid get into a school. You would come to him to talk about uh, a, a need that the community has. And so that sense of giving back has always been kind of a big lesson in the way we grew up. And so we try to give back to the community as much as we possibly can, as everybody does. And I think the charity or the, 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 the group that speaks loudest to us is probably the, um, the food bank, you know, and dealing with, with um, food insecurity, uh, you know, across the, across the state, across the nation. It's, it's an issue that, that really touches us in a meaningful way. Cool. Well, excellent. Well, thank you all for your contribution to Cincinnati. So I think we have time for a couple of questions if you wanna, we wanna bring the house lights up. There's two microphones on either side of the stage. Um, a golden opportunity to ask the Chile royalty right here. Any questions? <laughs> so I invite anybody that wants to come up and ask a question about Cincinnati Chile. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Brian Hiles. Uh, thanks guys for being here, I appreciate it. Um, I had a question for Joe, right? Yep. Um, so one of the things I noticed a few years ago is the 
So, uh, Skyline logo is actually from the east side. Can you speak to why they did the logo backwards? I cannot. I have no idea. I did not know that. Yeah, I noticed because the uh, PNC tower is on the left side of the crew tower. And it should be on the right side if they're looking at it from Price Hill. It's a mirror image. Okay. They, they planned that. I did not know. Yeah, check, yeah look at the logo next time. It's okay. From the sun, so. I'll say something. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have another one. Okay. I just noticed the other day, I'm Sharon, I'm from Delhi. Um, I just noticed the other day that you took the chili off the Gold Star logo. Yeah. What, what was up with that? That's crazy. You know how many family members are mad at me right now? <laughs> <laughs> so, I can imagine. 16 at least, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, for me, it's, it's kind of, um, it's a strategy to grow the company. You know, we've expanded our menu. You know, I'm the guy that's bringing the burgers back from Hamburger Heaven. Uh, we've um, remodeled our locations. And in Cincinnati, everybody knows Gold Star to be Gold Star Chili, Gold Star Chili Parlor. Um, so when you go out of town, you know, nobody, really has a concept out there that's successful that just sells chili. So you drive by for the first time and you see Gold Star Chili and you walk in, you say, I'd like a bowl of chili and you give them our chili. They're not happy. <laughs> <laughs> They're just not happy. They're like, this isn't chili. Where are the beans? I can't, why is it so runny? You know, all sorts of stuff. So uh, I think that we're in the business of selling conies and selling ways and selling burgers and selling fries. Okay. I'm really not in the chili business. If you really, in a weird way, think about it strategically, mm -hmm. if you want to think bigger than Cincinnati, you've you got to be more than chili. Okay. It's too small of an item. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> I was wondering, how do you guys eat your, like, conies? Uh, all right. Or chili? Good question. Yeah, me first. I, go for it. Yeah, go. For it. I'll, I always get mustard if I have like an important meeting or something later in the day. I do not get onions, but I will normally have onions on them too. It's a great question. Exactly the same way, but I'll throw some hot sauce on there. Frank's yes. hot sauce. I have to have onions, mustard, chili, cheese, cheese coney all the way. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I, I have one comment about Gold Star Chili. Yeah. So um, <laughs> over, uh, over the weekend, Saturday, I was in Seaman, Ohio. Seaman, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, went, I went to their, uh, I went through the drive-thru. I was out um, harvesting grapes, actually. And I got, which is my, my favorite thing at Gold Star Chili, which is the Gorito. Yeah. And if you don't know what a Gorito is, it's like a chili burrito, but it's yeah. got Fritos inside, so it's got that crunch. It's genius. I think it's... It, it, so it is a warm tortilla with chili, cheese, chipotle, ranch dressing, tortilla chips, and it's absolutely delicious. A little messy, but absolutely it's delicious. Absolutely delicious. We don't charge enough for that thing. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you. That's why I get it. It's one of the cheaper things I've made. I'll tell you right now. There's a girl down there that's got a shirt like this. You just sold her on that. Oh, is it? <laughs> but the 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 funny thing about so I, I I love the gorita, but the funny thing about Seaman, Ohio, is it's in the center of Amish country. Yeah. And I would love to be that first uh, marketing guy <laughs> to get a picture of Amish sitting on a fence so, eating cheese, cheese cones. Cones. I like that. That would be a great ad, I think. So anyway. All right, if there's no more questions. I saw a oh, hands okay. go up. Yeah. I don't have a question, Dan, but I wanted to thank all three of you because it helps us feel like our grandfathers and his father is still alive You're and with gonna, us. You will make me cry if you make me keep talking. You already about made it. me cry tonight, <laughs> so back at you. And no. I would like for all of us to have a meal together in honor of our oh. ancestors. Oh, yeah. It's a great idea. Ah. <laughs> Another question over here. 
Hey guys, thanks for being a part of this. This is, this, my mind is blown. I'm having a ball. <laughs> my name is Sam. Uh, I have a question. If uh, th th three of you guys are uh, foundational pieces of Cincinnati chili culture, which is a foundational piece of Cincinnati culture too. So if you guys who have agency over this culture, if you had to d describe what your like wildest dream was and what's gonna happen in the next 50 years of Cincinnati chili, what's that? Uh, what's next for Cincinnati chili? There you go. 50 yeah. years. <laughs> that's, that's, that's up to you, pal. <laughs> that's, that's up to you and your family. He wasn't, said he wasn't gonna be around. But, <laughs> 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 you Maybe we'll be eating it on pizza. On pizza. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You can. No, well, look, we're obviously in the restaurant business. The only way we grow is to open more locations, right? I mean, we, Gold Star has the already today is the number one selling frozen entree at Kroger. Our chili spaghetti item outsells anybody else in the category that's frozen item in units and in dollars, but that can only go so far. Between the two of us, whoever's got now, frozen- Leave me out of it. We, <laughs> yeah. I'm out of it. <laughs> Between the two of us, we sell more Cincinnati-style chili at Kroger than Kroger sells vanilla ice cream. Wow. I mean, it's, what's wrong with you people? You <laughs> eat it so much. It's like, I'm telling you, like Cincinnati is crazy about their chili. At one time, Gold Star had more locations than uh, Burger King and Wendy's combined. We had more locations than McDonald's. And then that's on top of what Skyline had. So it's just insane how big of a chili town this is. You're not gonna duplicate it again somewhere. I, I feel like it's almost impossible to get that much growth and, and, and traction in one market. So you gotta slice it differently. And so for us, I think the growth is about, you got to open more restaurants. And, you know, and how many more are we going to open in Cincinnati? I mean, there's just a point. So we go to Lexington, and we try to go to Louisville, and we try to go to Columbus, and we try to go to, well, I mean, we've been in New York, and we've been in Philadelphia. We've been all over the place, and it just doesn't cut it. But I'm going to give it one more shot. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. What else are you going to do, right? <laughs> Got another question. Hey guys, thanks for being here. Uh, my name's Clay, long time Cincinnati Chili fan, grew up eating it. I'm from a small town north of Cincinnati called Ross, Ohio. Oh, yeah. And our only two restaurants there growing up were, uh, you know, Gold Star and Wendy's. We just recently got a Skyline. My um, yeah. So kind of to piggyback off that question is, you know, what's the plan for global domination? <laughs> um, we, we all have family members here. We have family in Colorado, Oregon, um, Texas. You know, they've grown up in Cincinnati. They moved somewhere else for another job. I've literally sent care packages to family members of your seasoning, that's the, of that's your canned the chili. Yeah. I just, you touched on the frozen chili. So, so Louisville, I heard that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just really interested in like the business side of it. So, so what, what are your plans for like expansion? You're right. There can only be so many restaurants per capita here. What, what would you say like individually would be like your growth plan? Cause I I'm super it, interested in that. I want to, I want to share chili with the whole world, you know, <laughs> gold stars and skylines I, in China, I, gold, in Japan, I, I am waving, Europe, everywhere. You know what I mean? I, I am waving the franchise fee for you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> give me a call. I'll give you a business card. <laughs> I'm telling you, you guys have got to do it. No, but embedded in that, I think, is a subscription box, a Cincinnati Chili subscription box business. I like that. Business, I like you that. know? I mean, you know, we're, we're, we were so crazy. So we, we explored, and I was, I was there. We explored the product back in, I want to say, 2007 and eight, before the economy and the housing market bubble and all that good stuff. I was in China talking to investors in China because in China, they absolutely love the product. We taste tested with hundreds of people. Wow. They absolutely love the product. And guess what? The food cost was great because they didn't want much cheese on it. No. <laughs> right? And so, you know, and then that didn't go anywhere. We were in the Middle East in Gutha. We opened up locations in Gutha. And, you know, it just doesn't. And then, you know, I had some family members that opened up uh, a place in Jordan called uh, Chili House. And it sold more burgers and it sold chili, you know? So it's, 
it's just a, uh, it's a tough nut to crack. And I think, you know, I think Skyline has corporate locations in some of these out-of-town markets and a few franchise, fri franchises down south. And it's just, it's just tough. It's a tough, it's a tough thing. You know, the other piece of it too is we've got our, you know, distribution's an issue. You know, we only make it in one place and then you've got to, you know, but anyway, I'm figuring it out though. That's what I was going to hit on, like the, you can, you can have all these growth plans and everything, but like what makes, I think, all Cincinnati chili unique, one part is like fresh ingredients, uh, no shortcuts, and you can, like, I mean, you've seen, not to harp on like other restaurants, but like a uh, Friday's 15 or 20 years ago is not the same as the Friday's of today, and it just seems like they went with like, cheaper pre-made food ingredients. And I know for me, like growth plans are great. Expansion's great. But if it comes at the cost of like the core values of our food and it's not fresh anymore and we're pre-making like onions or anything like that, that's where I'm out on that kind of thing. Like it needs to be strategic growth and you need to stick with your core uh, ingredients and fresh ingredients because that's what everybody loves about Cincinnati Chili. <laughs> Good answer. Well, I think we have one time for one more question, and then we'll do the drawing for this. Oh, boy. Oh. Yes. I have oh just one more. I've been dying to know this, too. So we talked about how chili got started here in Cincinnati, but are people eating Cincinnati-style chili in Greece and Macedonia? Like, was it a, a main dish? Was it an a appetizer? Like, where did that actual food come from that your family brought over here? <laughs> they all turned they still eat it over there today. I've been to Bulgaria, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, went, I went to Bulgaria. Uh, my mother had never been back when she came over here, and she wanted to go back yeah. to see some of her sisters that were still around. And so I, we were in Bulgaria for two months, but that's, that's the only Eastern country we went to. We didn't go to Greece or Macedonia or any place else like that. Just, just for all the Greeks in here, I married a Greek girl, okay? Good. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know, I, I have heard, my uncle traveled uh, to Greece and, um, and he did have a dish that reminded him of Cincinnati style chili. I couldn't tell you what it was or anything like that, but there's probably something over there that is, is similar. It can't, there be, is all, a similar, it can't be all there made is up. a similar <laughs> meal yeah. over there. I was curious okay. about the, the how, did, how, did it, how did they land on chili as a descriptor? Because not only what, did it help to describe it, but it's also, it, it's kind of a, it, it's kind of a, a, a chain as well. <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah a, I mean, you know. it directs you into what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think it was brilliant because again, they could have called it Macedonian meat sauce. Yeah, they could have called been, it yeah. anything that didn't make sense, but chili was easily recognizable by Americans. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, so well, they yeah. chose something that Americans they wouldn't have to explain I, as I much. Would have been, I would have loved to be a part of that conversation. Yeah, right? can you that imagine? <laughs> All right, well, let's give them a final round of applause for their...